Welcome to Northeast Current. My name is James May, and I'm the Regional Press Director here at PennDOT District 4. I'm Mike Chaluto, I'm the Safety Press Officer at PennDOT. One of the things that we wanted to do today was to go through a number of the questions that we've been asked over the last few months, weeks, and years. Uh, we do get a lot of questions that come in to us here at PennDOT. First of all, just by way of introduction, we are right outside of our Traffic Management Center. This is an area where a lot of the planning takes place for the upcoming spring construction season. We've picked about seven of the questions that have come in that deal directly with the upcoming spring construction season, and we thought we'd go ahead and take those questions and try to answer them on air today. So, Mike, take us through some of the questions that we've been okay. asked Okay, the recently. first question we got is, Dear PennDOT, I've been driving for 42 years and have never seen potholes as bad as they are this year. What's going on and why on earth are they so bad? Unfortunately, that's not the only question that we've got this year dealing with potholes. I've talked with some of the old timers around here mm -hmm. and they say that uh, this is by far the worst year that we've ever had uh, as far as potholes go. Keep in mind the way that you create a pothole, the perfect recipe for a pothole essentially is you take some warm weather, add lots of water, and then very, very quickly have the temperatures drop very dramatically. So we've had already four or five times this year where the temperatures have gone from about 50 degrees and raining down to about five degrees overnight. And that has just caused havoc on the roads. You combine that with the fact that we've, we've already broken the temperature, the uh, record for the most snow for February. We're one of the coldest winters on record and it's just causing a lot of potholes across the area. Unfortunately, until the ground temperature warms up to about 45 degrees, the only solution is that we can go out and put some temporary called cold patch in. That's a very temporary fix. We know it's a temporary fix. And then this spring we'll be going out and we'll be doing a whole lot more fixing and patching on the roads. And uh, so we do have a plan to fix them, but for now it's just a temporary fix. I know, and there's a lot of roads. It's everywhere. It is. And it's you can always call 1-800-FIX-ROAD. That will take you if you want to report a pothole. But uh, odds are good that we've heard about the potholes all over the area and that uh, we have some plans to get out there and we're, we're getting out there and getting them fixed. And hopefully the weather will get better and we can get them taken care hopefully of. Hopefully that groundhog was wrong. Okay. Okay, what was the next question? Okay, the next question we have is about a project in Dixon City. It says, what can you tell me about the work taking place on Interstate 81 between Dunmore and Dixon City? Well, there's about four projects that are all taking place on Interstate 81 this summer. Let me just start in the northern part. That's the one that you're referencing here between the Dunmore exit and the Dixon City exit. Uh, that is part of a $30 million project. We're um, replacing bridges up there. The Main Avenue bridge is being replaced. The one um, or be rehabilitated. The one over the River Street is being rehabilitated as well. Um, that whole project is due to wrap up in the fall of this year. So they're going to have a little bit more work on it throughout the summer, wrapping up in the fall. Um, in probably April, the end of April or May time frame, the ramps from Main Avenue to 81 North will be open. Those ramps are closed right now. So those will be open in April, May time frame. Then the whole project is, set, is scheduled to be done um, right in the late to mid fall of this year. Working your way down, though, there are some other projects that are taking place. You've probably noticed the Avoca Airport Access Project. That's a $46 million project that's taking place um, down near the Avoca, uh, the airport project, we call it. Um, they're building a new road going back to an industrial park, so it has some economic development aspects to it. It also is a safety, pro a safety project because those ramps getting on and off the 81 are very short ramps. And so because of that, they're doing that. And um, just to ease up some of the congestion there by getting a lot of the trucks off of 81 and onto this access road. So it's a multifaceted project that they're doing there, but that project uh, will continue. The, that's going to continue to take place until August of 2015, so that's a long-term project. We are keeping two lanes open throughout the duration of that, mm -hmm. as with all of our projects in the corridor area in the busy section of Interstate 81. So that's the next one we have on 81. Um, there's also a third one that's going to be started up here um, in just uh, probably next month. It should be going out uh, and, and getting started. We're replacing four bridges on Interstate 81 northbound and southbound, uh, right near the, the Pittston dupont exit. So that will be taking place as well. Uh, that's going to start here in the spring. It, it's already been bid. It'll, it'll start in the spring. And that project will go until October 2017. And that's a $27 million project. So bridges, unfortunately, are very, very expensive to, to replace. One of the things that we always try to do, especially in what we call the corridor from about Nanakoke up through Clark Summit area in Wilkes-Barre, 
Sprint and on 81 is we try to keep two lanes open at all times unless there's emergency work. So that makes the cost go up a little bit, but we feel that that's necessary in order to keep the traffic going through there like we do. So um, three major projects all taking place on 81 uh, throughout the summer and many of them continuing for the next few years. Our next question is coming from Pike County, which is what is wrong with uh, Interstate 84? Why is it so rough? And what is being done to fix it? Now, it's not all, that's not all in Pike County. Some of it's in Wayne, some's in Lackawanna also. If you remember chemistry class from middle school or early high school, uh, one of the things they, that they taught you that is that there are certain chemicals that react with each other. One of the things that's happening in Pike County especially, on Interstate 84, is when they built that road back in the early 1970s, they had a brand new and improved cement. When they put this cement down, and, and you, to make concrete, you mix cement with rock. What they did not know at the time was that the this, this cement, when it was mixed with certain rocks that were found in certain pockets around the world, it would have this chemical reaction and begin to form a gel and it would begin to essentially disintegrate. Unfortunately, one of those pockets of uh, quarries of rocks is in Pike County, Pennsylvania. So what's happening on 84 is that the interstate is essentially disintegrating from the bottom up. It, it's falling apart from underneath, working its way up. Um, they've tried to pave over it to try to come up with a solution. They've tried to uh, seal it. They go out and they do patching. But you have a chemical reaction that's taking place on that road, and the, ground, and the road is essentially just falling apart. Because of that, the only solution, unfortunately, is to go out and to rip the entire interstate out and to, to put a new interstate in. We are starting that project. Uh, they're going to be doing some of the ramps, some of the crossovers on that right now. Uh, it'll really begin to, to start up. Uh, in earnest in the springtime. That's a long-term project. It's a $66 million project just for the first section. There's five different sections that they're doing. Uh, the first section will go from exit 46 out to the New York line. Uh, that section of road is $66 million. Then once they're done with that, um, and that, pro that portion will be done by um, April uh, 2016, then they will move on to the other five sections. So altogether, it's probably going to cost close to 400 million, four to 500 million dollars to do the entire project. But what's taking place there is a chemistry class uh, lesson. And what's taking place there is essentially the road is disintegrating from the bottom up and the plan is to completely replace it. And on that note, last week they had a meeting with emergency management people uh, throughout New York State and the Pennsylvania State counties up there to um, to make sure there, if there's an accident or if someone breaks down to keep the traffic flowing. Because what they'll do is they'll move all of the traffic onto the, the one side of the interstate. You have two lanes going east, two lanes going west. And so they'll move all the traffic over onto the one side and replace the other side and then move all the traffic back. And so it'll be single lane in both directions. Now, you don't like to have single lane on the interstate, but that's a little bit lower traffic area out there in Pike County than you would have if you were in like the Scranton Wilkes-Barre area. So they'll move all the traffic to one side, replace the other road, move all the traffic back. And during that time, it will be single lane. So we do have to think through those things. What do you do if there's a crash in there? How do you, if it's single lane, how do you get an ambulance up there, a fire truck, a tow truck. And so that's the type of things that they're working through. And they have some gates that they'll have along the way to make sure uh, that we take care of all that stuff. But we are working with the emergency responders on that type of thing. And also on that note, New York, New York is also replacing the bridge too. Right. As soon as you get across into New York, they're doing a separate project there. But we're coordinating these together so that we don't wrap up one project and you move into another project in two years. So combining them all together uh, means that you just go through the area for the next few years and then uh, the New York portion will be done, then ours will be done after that. Okay, now this question came in for, for you, Mr. May. Somebody said that some work will be starting on Route 6 and 11 in Clark Summit this year. Is that true? If so, when and where? It is, and this work will be taking place uh, from Clark Summit on 6 and 11 up through Dalton, um, all the way up to the Wyoming County line. It is a 30 or a fi almost a $50 million project, and we are replacing or rehabilitating eight bridges in that area, doing some repaving. There will be some new lights going in, so it's going to be a lot of work taking place. And anybody who's driven in that, that road knows that, one, it's very rough, but those bridges are very, very old bridges in that area. So it's one of those things, nobody likes the construction when we're doing it, but if we don't do it and uh, the bridges get to the, to the point where they have to be posted and downgraded and uh, even shut down, then that's the, where we don't want to be. So that, that work is going to start here uh, in the spring again, and it will end in 2017. Okay, this is a question that came in from uh, Luzerne County, the Hazelton part of Luzerne County. Broad Street in Hazelton was done last year, but it's still a mess. Why didn't they do it right? 
the road is rough and the transitions to the side streets are not even level. Actually, it was done, but it was not finished. And they got to the point in the fall of 2013 where the project manager down there realized that she could really rush things and probably finish up the Broad Street project, but she was not comfortable really rushing it along. Whenever you rush projects, uh, you end up putting the asphalt down and the temperature's too cold and it doesn't hold. And uh, just like anything, if you rush it, it's not done right. So she made the decision that in the, the center part of the city, in the central business district, um, some of that work does not have the final paving done right now. They're leaving it through the winter and then in the spring they will go back. It's not a whole lot of work that needs to, to take place there, but that whole project should wrap up by um, late spring, early summer of this year. And at that point, um, they will fix a lot of those issues that were brought up with the, the unevenness as you transition to the, some of the side roads. There's some more painting that needs to be done and the final uh, coating of the asphalt needs to be put down right in the downtown uh, central business district. So the project is not done yet and that's why it looks like it's not done. Okay, but the good news for the people down there will be done in the spring. And that's going to be a very nice project when it's all done. There's a lot of things that are going in there. A lot of things just with the enhancement of the city, the lights, the sidewalks, um, some more turning lanes. Um, it, is, it was necessary because of the, the shape that the road was in, but along with that, I think that most folks are going to find when it's all done and the construction crews get out of there and uh, they clean the road off and they, they have the final pave, it'll be very, very beautiful in downtown Hazleton. Okay, good. Another question that came in, it was addressed to me myself, there was a story in the news recently about some work coming up on 309 in Mountaintop. I drive this area every day. Can you tell me what is planned? Thank you so much. Well, what's being planned when you go through the rock cut, if you're going from Wilkes-Barre to Mountaintop area, in that rock cut area, um, there have been some accidents in there. Anytime you take traffic through a rock cut, um, many times the water will come down onto the road and during the winter time it will freeze. And then also when you're in the rock cut, the sun doesn't have as much time to hit the road to warm it up. So during all rock cuts, you always have issues with um, the, the road freezing much faster than, than other portions. But what's taking place there is that we're going to move all of the traffic um, from what is now the southbound lane onto the two northbound lanes. So once again, all the traffic will be moved into the, the, the one side of the street. So it'll be single lane north, single lane south, and they're going to be doing some blasting, moving that rock cut back. Um, they're they're going to move it back and just move it off the road a little bit farther so that it's a safety improvement project, essentially. That's been an area that gets a lot of snow when you're coming down over the mountain, a lot of snow in that area. So that will start, uh, it was supposed to start, we were looking at uh, a March time frame, March 1st, we're looking at starting. Well, it's zero degrees out there. Hey, <laughs> zero so. degrees and there's snow on the ground. So um, as soon as the weather warms up, we will start that project. And uh, as far as the, uh, the majority of the work, it should wrap up by October, early November of this year, the fall of 2014. So that's a one uh, construction season project. Okay, uh, one of our final questions for today is, um, it came in from about the back mountain. There are, real, there are really roundabouts going in Dallas. People are going to get killed and trucks are going to get stuck. Please tell me if this is a false rumor I'm hearing in the back mountain. So somebody wants to know if it's a false rumor that roundabouts are going in. I will tell you that it's not a false rumor. And you know what, they bring up two concerns that we hear a lot of times with roundabouts. One, they're more dangerous, people are going to get killed, and um, on this one, this is at least the second or third time people have said there's a lot of trucks that go through there, you'll never get a truck through a roundabout. Um, on both of those, studies show time and time again that a roundabout is much safer than a traditional intersection. If you have a traditional intersection, what you have is people hitting each other either sideways at 90 degree angles, which a lot of very, very serious injuries take place that way, or rear-ending somebody. Um, with a roundabout, if there is a crash, and with a roundabout, the traffic just keeps on moving, and uh, if there is a crash, it's usually a very, very minor fender bender. They are a little bit difficult to get used to. I lived in Australia for a year, and uh, there they do the roundabouts backwards than what we do here, so I had to get used to not only roundabouts, but backwards from us roundabouts. Um, but once you get used to them, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of roundabouts because they, they keep the traffic moving, they're much safer. These have been designed intentionally with the, with the idea that they know there's a lot of trucks that go, especially up like toward P&G area, and so they, they are designed that they're big enough that they can accommodate uh, some of the big trucks that go through. So we've thought all that stuff through. Um, I would say this is one of the, the first roundabouts that we've had in this area. Uh, try it. It's one of those things I think that if people go into it with an open mind, they will 
like I do, most people end up really liking the roundabouts and the way they keep the traffic moving and the way that's a safety improvement project. When, when do they expect this to start or when do they like looking at uh, being completed? The roundabout is not going to start until October 2015 and then um, it's a, a multi-year project. So um, that one's not starting until a little ways ahead. I think the question came up because we've been meeting with some of the business owners there recently to talk about what a roundabout is, how it works, what impact it will have on their, on their business and just in sort of the design aspect of it. So we have been having meetings out there with people. With this or any other questions, I know that we get a lot of questions on Kaiser Avenue. That's another one that uh, we'll be continuing to do the work out there. Um, and that project will kick off again in the spring. And, and that's another one that a $10 million project. What were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say, when you're talking about roundabouts, I think at the airport project, your roundabouts are... Um Right. When we're, exactly. When we're talking about that going in out there at the Avoca Airport, there's uh, three roundabouts going there as well. So these are the two roundabouts that we have coming into the area. Um, those are some of the projects. As I was saying, Kaiser Avenue is one that a lot of people ask about. The Kaiser Avenue project, um, we did some additional work out there because we were working with the utilities. Uh, what's taking place here soon is we're going to be continuing the work uh, from Oak Street and Taylor um, all the way down almost to the... Um, where you get on the Scranton Expressway, right, right, right there. So that entire stretch is being repaved. There's some new lights going in down there, uh, widening of some of the lanes, some turning lanes going in. Uh, but most people are most excited about repaving it because it will make the ride uh, much nicer there. Okay, another project that we have uh, is the Harrison Avenue Bridge, which is going to be starting in the fall of, of 2014 and completed in the summer, uh, fall of 2015. And that what is replacing the bridge over in Harrison Avenue, which is really in, in an old bridge. And Anybody who's driven under that bridge is very, very obvious that that's a very old bridge that needs to be replaced. The nice thing about that is that we will keep the current bridge in place while we build the new bridge. And then once the new bridge is built, we'll build, move all the traffic over. So there won't be in, any interruption. Right, because that's we, a major uh, connection to the uh, it is, East major, Scranton. Major, major connection. And finally, let me just point out that we were talking in the beginning about potholes. And one of the nice things that's taking place here is that um, the legislature and the governor recently passed a $2.3 billion transportation bill. Part of what's going to be taking place with that is that some of those funds will be going into repaving a lot of the roads and doing some surface treatment. Um, and so because of that bill, we know of at least 70 miles of roads that will be repaved. And, and don't think, well, it's just a straight 70 miles. We'll take a bad section, we'll do a, a couple hundred feet, and then we'll do... So when you think 70 miles, that's a lot of paving that we're going to be able to do, that along with a num number of other projects. But um, hang tight. We know that the roads right now are very, very rough with the pop holes. Our guys will get out as soon as this weather cooperates a little bit. They'll get out and they'll begin doing that. And then in the spring and the summer, they're going to be doing some additional paving that wasn't even planned earlier. Um, there's a lot of bridge projects, a lot of things taking place here in the spring and the summer, and we're really excited about that. Along with all of the projects that we have going on, Mike also heads up our safety program here at PennDOT. And so there's a lot of opportunities that we can come out and speak to your organization. So if you want to kind of touch on those a little bit, Mike, and, and highlight some of the safety programs that we have taking place here at PennDOT. Okay, the first thing I want to say is it's March, St. Patrick's Day is next week, or 10 days from now, and we're having, uh, people are having parades. And there's a new one in Pittston this year. There's one in Wilkes-Barre. There's one, especially the big one in Scranton. So we want everybody to be safe. And the, the key message this year is do not drink and drive. So if you need a cab, need a ride home, if you have a designated driver, please have someone take you home from the parade. We don't want no, um, we want you to be able to go to the parade next year. Now, we, like you were saying, we also have programs where we could come to your organization. Um, teen driving is a big issue. Uh, senior, mature senior driving is another issue. Uh, child, seat, child safety seats for children in their cars. Uh, bike safety, motorcycle safety. So there are several key um, elements and issues that we could talk about. Well, on behalf of the, the Department of Transportation, thank you so much for joining us as we took a look at some of the questions that we have. If you have any questions at all, if there's any issues that you may have that come up, feel free to contact me. My email is jamay at pa.gov. If you have a pothole that you want to report, you can always call 1-800-FIXED-ROAD. Or if you just have questions on anything, my direct number is 570-963-4044. Thank you so much.